Now this time, the prince from the kingdom behind the mountain was looking for a bride. He happened to be passing by that day, after Snow White had died. He had tried to hold balls to find a queen, but that hadn't worked out. The prince was amazed when he saw the beautiful Snow White when he was riding around the mountains on his trusty horse. When he heard Snow White's story, he could not bear to leave her. Let me take her back to the palace, he begged the dwarves. Her beauty and story will enchant my people for one hundred years. The dwarves agreed. But as the prince's servants started to move the glass coffin, they stumbled and the coffin rocked from side to side. Out of Snow White's mouth tumbled a piece of the poison apple. The witch's spell was broken at last! Snow White stirred, and she opened her eyes. Overjoyed, the prince lifted her out of the coffin and held her in his arms. As they walked, Snow White found herself falling in love with the prince, and it was plain to the dwarves that the prince was already in love with her. Ride back with me to the palace, the prince said. We shall make plans to be married at once. Snow White saw the sad look on the dwarves' faces. I love you too, she cried, and hugged and kissed each one of them in turn. Go with your prince, they told her, but do not forget us. I'll never forget you, Snow White told them as the prince swept her up in his arms. And I promise you can spend lots of weekends at the palace. I never agreed to that, said the prince. The wedding was splendid, and the king of the kingdom behind the mountain was overjoyed that his son had found a new bride. However, trouble lay ahead since the dwarfs spent every weekend dining at the palace with them, much to the prince's dismay. He secretly did not like the dwarfs and did not want them to visit at all. When the dwarfs did arrive at the palace one special evening, Snow White and the prince held a dinner for them around a big table in the banqueting room. Little did Snow White know that the dwarves had a hidden purpose on this particular occasion. Prince, we are always honoured to be your guests here, said the oldest dwarf, but our cottage is in need of some attention. At first Snow White didn't know what the dwarves meant, but they soon made themselves clear. Over time we grew accustomed to having Snow White cook clean and sew for us. We are now at a loss, for the work is not being done. Snow White was shocked. Were the dwarves really suggesting that she, a princess, go back and work for them as a housekeeper? I'm sure we can arrange for a servant to come to the palace and clean for you, Snow White said. You just as soon go yourself, said the prince. And he turned to the dwarves, saying, Behold! Snow White is my princess no longer. She will return to you and resume your household chores and food preparation. Snow White was shocked and upset that the prince would cast her aside so easily. But the prince had grown tired of the dwarfs' constant visits and felt this was the only way to make sure they never returned. And so it was that Snow White was forced to return with the dwarfs to their cottage and was made to do all of the household tasks that they had neglected to do since she had left. It wasn't long until Snow White escaped one day while they were in the mountains. They were angry to see she had gone, but they were so lazy they didn't just disregard their chores, but they couldn't even be bothered to look for Snow White. Soon, the seven dwarfs became too lazy even to mine for gold, and they all died. Snow White went on to have another adventure, but that's another story. Meanwhile, the evil witch had everyone fooled. She did not die on the mountainside, but instead, actually, the flash of lightning was a spell that she cast to make it look like she died 
but actually she just transported away somewhere. The witch was free to cause more trouble and nuisance elsewhere. The end. The queen has ordered me to take for me to lead you into the forest and kill you. The queen has ordered me to take you into the forest and kill you. She also wants me to rip out your heart and take it back to her. Snow White was so scared she almost ran away, but she was too afraid to run away. Don't wake her, said the oldest dwarf. She looks so peaceful. And the other kind-hearted dwarfs nodded each other. And the kind-hearted dwarves nodded each other, nodded at the eyes of the wicked clinic. She away and away she and away she hurried. The witch had hardly reached the gate before they. The witch had hardly reached the gate before they came out of the forest. In fact, the pretty woman was an evil witch in a clever disguise. Her nature was so cruel and envious that she soon became greatly feared. 